Hello, Silver fans. This is T, and you're in the place to be for Silver Education, Acquisition, and Entertainment. Hey, as you can see here, the place to be is Collector's Gallery in Oak Forest, Illinois. Hey, back with Sherry for another fun video. And hey, you guys know you love Sherry, so you might as well hit that like button for me. And if you're new here, be sure to subscribe. If you like coin shop videos, hey, I make a bunch of them. Be sure to subscribe. Enjoy. Tea. All right, Sherry. Hey, thanks for having me back. Hi, T. How are you? Good. How about yourself? Just peachy. You just came back from Florida. I, I just did. came back from Florida. Yep, yep. We were not together. Different, different <laughs> posts, but yes, we both yeah. came back from the same place. Yeah, I went to a couple coin shops down in Fort Lauderdale, and it was really nice down there, though. I'll tell you what. But coming from 80 degree and sunshine to this mess, whoo, yeah, how about it? How about man, it? oh man, uh, <laughs> it makes me wonder why my ancestors came to this region. Uh, you know, how about it? How about <laughs> it? You know, why would you come from Italy in places in Europe where it's summer all the time to this? It was the uh, mills back in the day for uh, my people up in East Chicago. And so, uh, let's start off with a bang. Uh, ever feel like slapping a customer? Yes, I've wanted to slap many customers, many, <laughs> unfortunately. But I've been doing this a long time, so don't you know? Don't think it, that's every week because that's not like that. No, I most hear. of my customers are great, you know, and I, I cherish every single one of them. But you get that one in there that yeah. you just want to shake. Them. <laughs> what the hell is the matter with you? Yeah, but yeah, I, I hear you. <laughs> in my uh, in my area, I, I feel the same way every once in a while. Oh, I think yeah. everybody does, <laughs> but can't do that. Yeah, you know, unless you're, I guess, unless you're Will Smith. And you can and get then, away then with you it. you can get away with it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when I was down in uh, Florida, I went to several shops. A couple of them I shot videos at, uh, and a couple of them I didn't. Mm -hmm. uh, at one place, uh, a place was asking for 725 over spot for generics. Oh, wow. Okay. That's, I Good mean, for I them. That was kind of high. I guess <laughs> yeah, they can get it, you know? I'm right. If they can get it, great for them. But, you know. Uh, what's the what's the rate here? It's still $5 over on generic rounds. And okay. Bars, yes. I, you know, here in the Chicagoland area, there are a lot of large dealers. So for me mm -hmm. to be able to compete with that, I have to keep my numbers in competition with them. So mm -hmm. if I start ac asking outrageous numbers that's not going to get me anywhere you mm -hmm. know i'll get the one lone rangy customer that comes in that doesn't mind spending 725 uh -huh. but the majority of customers know better than that so. yeah yeah uh if someone walked in with an american gold eagle mm -hmm. a one tenth ounce mm -hmm. what would you pay them 10 percent over gold 10 percent over gold okay mm -hmm. if someone walked in with a dos pesos mexican gold coin what would you pay them Probably five percent over gold. Okay, what's the difference? Uh, recognizability. Recognizability. Okay. Yes. Um, I mean, the U.S. government charges. The, well, the U.S. Mint. I'm sorry, charges mm -hmm. a, a heavy premium over the spot price of gold for that stuff. Okay. Uh, Mexican. Most of the stuff that we get is old. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be new, brand new product that okay. comes out of Mexico. So it's been around a while. So you don't have to pay those premiums for that. I see. I see. Okay. Well, that's helpful. That's helpful to know. So uh, just so I understand, uh, so if I was to buy uh, those pesos and then come sell like, those mm -hmm. pesos, I'd pay a little bit less at the beginning, right? but I would get a little bit less on the other end. Right. Uh, the same and same goes. thing right. with the gold eagle. Right. Pay a little bit more up front right. and get a little bit more on the, the back end of that. Thanks for putting that one to, to, to I, I rest. I hope I explained it well. No, you did. You did. Uh, down in Florida, it seems like, uh, the, especially the generic silver is mm -hmm. drying up down there. People are buying it up. Mm -hmm. They're not coming in to sell it over the counter. What are you? What are you it's experiencing? It's here? drying up everywhere. Unfortunately, okay. I mean, I, I pre-ordered a large chunk of that, which I had to prepay for. Okay. Um, and I'm still two months out. Uh, stuff that I paid for two months ago that are st is still starting to trickle in a little really? at a time. Yes. Wow. So yeah, it's it's crazy. I bought um, almost ten thousand ounces back in November, mm -hmm. and I am getting the last of that ten, and I had to pay for that mm -hmm. out of my pocket, and I'm getting the last of that product coming in this week. Okay. So I mean that's that's a long run, you mm -hmm. know, four months, five months yeah. to get that product. Heck yeah. That's uh, that's really eye-opening. 
so the str the stray stuff that does come in over mm -hmm. the counter, uh, you know, w when it does, mm -hmm. do people give you an indication as to like why they're selling? Is it desperation or is it they inherited stuff, taking profit, cashing out for a retirement? Yeah, I don't have anybody out there saying that they're taking profit. Okay, okay. the people who are selling, um, they they're just in need of money at that particular time. They either inherited the product and it, they're, they're not interested in investing in gold or silver or anything of that nature. Yeah. Um, and they just want to liquidate what it is that they have. Um, the other end of that is people who need the money at mm -hmm. that particular time. You know, something happened at home, washer and dryer broke, car broke down, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. They need the cash and that's an easy access of cash for them. So. Yeah. Um, do you ever have people come in where you feel like, oh, maybe they're a little bit shady. Maybe this sure. is ill-gotten. Sure. I, I don't deal with those people. Okay. I, I will talk to them. Yeah. I will feel them out. And that's with, in, in my business, I mean, in all these years and the experience that I've learned, you, you get a feel for people. So mm -hmm. whether somebody's bringing in an ounce of gold, whether they're bringing in a diamond ring, um, no matter what it is, okay, you get a feel for people. Mm -hmm. And if you don't feel comfortable with the deal, you, you talk. I talk to them. I don't throw them out the store. I just say, I'm sorry, it's not something I'm interested in at this point in time. Okay. Well, why not? I'm just not interested, but thank you. I appreciate you bringing it in. Yeah. You know? Say you bought something from somebody that looked legit. Mm -hmm. How would you find out that it was stolen or something like later on? Like, did, did the police check? Or? Sure, sure. Okay. I, I, the... I deal with the police all the time. In oh, really? To, yeah. There's, I mean, there's robberies all around. Okay. And I they get give you a heads I, up, keep an eye well, out for something? Yeah, I get family members who call, you know, like we just had a burglary or... You know, my kid had a party and this was stolen. Can uh, you keep your eyes open? Really? Um, or they know that something was stolen and it was brought here. Uh -huh. I work with the police and the families to get back whatever it was to wow. them. Okay. I have no problem doing that. I'm, okay. I'm a legitimate business. And, you know, making a making $100 profit off of something that is stolen is uh, not good karma. I, no. I thoroughly believe in karma. So. Well, thanks for satisfying that curiosity. You know, I, I, a lot of what I talk about is, of course, the precious metals mm -hmm. that will show throughout our video but part of it is like the ins and outs of running a coin job that's sure. uh, it's, it's like that with any business though mm -hmm. any any business where you're purchasing something from the public mm -hmm. you have to be astute at what it is that you're doing being able to read people mm -hmm. um and have a feeling i mean I've, I've misjudged my feelings on people i had an older woman in here uh -huh. who was selling me stuff turns out it was it was all stolen. No so kidding. You, some people you just don't get that vibe from, but it turns out that yeah, that's what it is. So wow. You work with the police, you work with the family, you try to make it right for them, uh -huh. and I'm grateful that I'm able to get it back to the people who it actually belongs to. Okay, cool. Uh, paper currencies. Mm -hmm. uh, do you sell much of that, or is there a market for that? There is and a big market for it. I wish I was able to buy more of it. Uh -huh. um, it comes in spurts. If I buy one little group of currency. Next thing I know, over the next month, I'm going to be buying tons of it. Okay. I'm waiting for that swing. I haven't been able to buy any collections uh -huh. of currency coming through. Uh -huh. I desperately would like to do that. So. Do you have anything <laughs> exceptionally cool in the store today? No. It's okay. all just generic. Okay. Same thing. Yeah. Nothing Nothing to jump up and down about. Okay. Yeah. Collector coins. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is something I have to admit, I don't have much expertise, but it seems to be a very big topic for a lot of the my fellow youtubers mm -hmm. um they collect these coins that I, I don't even know most of the names of them like queen's beasts and right. stuff like that I, I mean if i was going to collect anything it might be some of the star wars stuff uh i don't know if you've seen any of the star wars yeah, stuff that's I, come I, out lately. i've seen a lot of that stuff uh -huh. i try not to handle it if i can help it because uh -huh. it's such a huge premium over that and it's a specialized market so yeah. um when that stuff comes in, I usually just end up running it on eBay myself. Okay. No, it just seems like there's so much of it out there to collect. Oh yeah. What do you choose? You can make and yourself what's crazy. Gonna... You can make yourself crazy trying to figure it out. I always tell people, collect what you like. Yeah. That way, if it goes up in value, great. If it doesn't, mm -hmm. you haven't lost anything because you bought something that you liked. Yeah. So... I, I'm and I don't know. I, I guess with my personality I think well maybe if I got into that I'd go overboard you know because <laughs> there is a lot of cool stuff out there there is there is um but I kind of also equated to the baseball cards in the 70s 80s 90s right. I'm a child of the 80s I used to collect baseball cards yeah. and then like by the 90s there were so many companies so mm -hmm. many thousands of you know hundreds of different right. series and different things to collect and they I, overwhelm the market and it just gets then at that point eh. 
And then when the market crashes, guess what? What do you got? Firewood. So yeah. it's, it's yeah. all just junk. Yeah, a lot okay. of those 90s baseball cards are right. pretty much junk. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's not going to happen with coins and silver and gold and things like that because that has a value, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's not going to happen. Yeah. But any of the big premiums that you would have paid because you mm -hmm. had to have a Queen's Beast or exactly. you, know, you had to have this Star Wars Leia coin. Okay. Well, don't get me started on Leia. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I'm a child of the okay, 70s sorry, and 80s. That's a crush okay. on you. Know? I'll, I'll pick I, I think I might pay a little extra for that. A but. Garfield coin, how's that? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, you're, you're paying those big premiums on that, but you buy it because you like it. Yeah. You know, it's something that mm -hmm. you want to keep and hang on to because you like it. Okay. So you're not, not buying that as an investment. Not as like, hey, I'm going to get rich 10 years down the road off of this one coin? No. Okay. I get uh, asked consistently about platinum, mm -hmm. especially from a fellow YouTuber named PPP, Pistol Packing Pilot. Um, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like that name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a wild man. He's okay. crazy. Uh, and, uh, you know, he flies into Chicago all the time. He's an okay. airline uh, pilot. Uh, but anyway, uh, he's always asking about platinum. He's always talking about platinum. Uh, last time I asked you, and this is about well over a month ago, mm -hmm. probably six, seven, eight weeks ago, uh, you said you didn't have many people walking in the door right. asking for platinum. Um, has that changed at all or no, still the same no, thing? The same uh, just thing. in this particular market? I think it is such an undervalued metal. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't understand why there isn't more of a demand for it. I, I really don't. I mean, historically, platinum was always way more than gold. That market all changed around. Mm -hmm. um, there just doesn't seem to be the demand for platinum anymore. Mm -hmm. So for whatever the reason, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. I, I like the metal. Yeah. Nobody and cares, if, though. And my my guess is if people came in here and started asking for it all the time, you, you would trade in right. platinum. Right, then I would make it a point to have a position in platinum. But yeah. there's no reason for me to have it if I don't have any clientele for it. The same guy I just mentioned, he cusses like a sailor. Oh, good for you. <laughs> but he's got a heart of gold. Okay. And he also asked me about that uh, Project Buddies Fire Department. What, what is that? What Project Fire Buddies is a organization that is run through the Oak Forest Fire Department. It was it started by Kurt DeGroot. Mm -hmm. He they sponsor and handle children with childhood cancers. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, children who are sick. Mm -hmm. And they make it a point to bring them gifts, help the families out when needed, um, surprise them with fire trucks and, mm -hmm. you know, special occasions, birthdays and things like that. These, these kids come out of the hospital and mm -hmm. they make it a point to make it special for them to either um, have a load of fire trucks come by and, mm -hmm. and present them all with gifts and mm -hmm. brighten up their days and oh, that's really cool. help them out with funds where needed. And it's a, a very worthwhile thing that they do. Yeah. It's like a Make-A-Wish Foundation for kids okay. on a smaller scale. Organized by the fire department. But organized by the Oak Forest Fire Department, yeah. Very cool. I will put a link to that information down in my video description. Thank so you. if anybody feels that. like they uh, want to learn more, yeah. they certainly Most can definitely. by going down to the description and clicking the link. Uh, so, hey, I am a, a bit of a nerd. I, I, I read a... No, I, I, don't. <laughs> Uh, I, 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 I met your wife. She's a hottie. No. <laughs> I enjoy reading when I get a chance. I read a book about uh, the owner of uh, Silvertown, the guy who founded Silvertown. Mm -hmm. His name is Leon, Leon. Hendrickson, yep. fellow Hoosier like me. Mm -hmm. uh, he got himself in some hot water. He got sent down to uh, Terre Haute. Mm -hmm. uh, and so for those who don't know, there's a federal uh, penitentiary in yes, Terre Haute, Indiana. Yep. Uh, coincidentally... I was born in Terre Haute when my dad was at okay. Indiana State University. Um, and anyway, Leon literally sold a bucket of gold for cash mm -hmm. um, and got big, got in big trouble mm -hmm. uh, for not filling out the proper paperwork. Uh, what are the rules on that these days? If somebody walks in with an ungodly amount of cash and they just want to buy up all the gold you have, Right. Well, look, what I, do you have to do with that? Normally, I will not take that type of cash. Okay, I, I just stay away from it. The paperwork is horrendous. Um, you have to file forms. You have to submit all of that to the government. You need your driver's license. You need your social security number. Um, there's a lot of paperwork that gets filled out with that. The Uncle Sam wants to know where is that cash coming from, and then they're going to question you. Where did you get that cash? Mm -hmm. They want to know. 
gold and silver and metals and things like that are a safe haven for people to hide funds. Sure. And they don't want that. You know, you got the Patriot Act and they just don't want that anymore. So there are, if you come in with more than $10,000 in cash, I will fill out forms. And okay. That's just so the that's the is. threshold, 10 Gs. Yes, yes, that is the threshold. Yes. Okay. And that is aggregate. That's not in one time. That's aggregate over a period of time. So that's money laundering and... I just don't get involved in that. So. Okay. One of my viewers had uh, the opposite scenario. He was posing this question. Mm -hmm. uh, say uh, a person br brings in like 20 grand worth of precious metals. Mm -hmm. uh, do you pay cash? Do you sure. have to? I okay. can do that. Okay. okay. So there's that, no government limit no, on is, that? No, there's no government limit on how much cash I, I can pay out. Okay. Oh. It's how much cash I take in. Okay. Ah. That person is not a business. I always get asked the question, well, what about taxes? And, you know, what do I do about that? That's between you, your God, and your accountant. That has absolutely nothing to do with me. What you do with your money is huh. your business. It has nothing to do with me. Very educational. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, another guy that I watch, uh, his name, he's got a funny name, Bionic Fishy Fish. <laughs> as, <laughs> okay. as, as silly as that sounds, uh, he really knows his stuff. Okay. And he's been getting into annex slabs okay uh you know of course you know pcgs and uh, ngc ngc yeah. are the uh, two biggies but annex it's just uh is that coming back or do you, is there I like know, i've been seeing more and more of it annex was historically i mean it was one of the first grading companies out there yeah um but they've historically been known as their authentication services not their grading services are they still around yeah they're okay. still around i get i get slabs from them for a lot of the new silver eagles i think they're getting into that business it's a a big money business for ngc and pcgs you know mm -hmm. all the new silver eagles and commems uh -huh. and everything that comes out new mm -hmm. these companies send all that crap off to them uh-huh I'm sorry, send those things off to them <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, have it all slabbed and, uh -huh. you know, people are making a mint off of that. The, the buyer, not so much, uh -huh. okay, in the long run. You're paying a premium to have that, whatever it is, slabbed in there. Yeah. Um, and, and Annex is jumping on that bandwagon, which mm. I don't blame them. It's a market for it, so bit of a nerd. <laughs> I've been thinking about putting my American Silver Eagles in a book just to yeah. look at them. Dansko or Whitman? Uh, and I see you have a lot of books behind you there. And do you sell a lot of those? Yeah, or? I do. Yeah, if you can put them in a book like that, something that is um, chemical free, mm -hmm. that, that's something you want to do. You don't want to use the old, um, I don't even remember who the hell made these books, but they were the ones that had the plastic slides and you would just put the coins into the plastic. Yeah. And that always leaks PVC over the years, mm. which, yeah. It's, yeah. The green, no, sticky, bueno. nasty substance that you can't get off the coins. So mm -hmm. you want to stay away from that. Okay. Well, I've been kind of kicking around the idea. Um, hey, uh, the 2022 Mexican Silver Libertads, any clue as to when they were coming out? Do you, do you have any ends whatsoever with any of your I dealers or anything? No idea. All right. No clue. Whenever they come out, Whenever you've got to decide. let me know, Sherry. Um, does Atmex or anybody have a date? Um, I don't think any anybody that? does. I can't find a date you, anywhere. You would think some, a couple of those major companies would have some sort of a date as to when they're expecting delivery, but no, yeah. I haven't heard anything. Okay. I, I notice uh, on a lot of your stuff you have prices, mm -hmm. and, it, and that's a little uncommon. In most uh, coin shops, you know, you ask what the price is, and the price varies mm -hmm. from day to day to day. Uh, do you just change those prices frequently, mm -hmm. or uh, it's just... <laughs> yes, I do. Unfortunately, okay. yes, I do. It's been a lot of time pricing and repricing. I don't like to have to stand here over somebody and... Oh, well, this is $3, and that's yeah. $10, and that's $22. Well, especially if you're busy. Right. And, you know, if, if somebody doesn't agree with the price that I have on something, I'm always negotiable on whatever it is. Okay. Gold and silver, not so much, okay? Uh -huh. But, you know, coins and things like that, I'm always negotiable on that. Uh -huh. And I try to keep up with what the latest prices are, but I always miss something, and, you know, it is what it is. I'm not hard in stone. Uh -huh. This is price $10. You have to pay $10. Yeah. No, that's not what that is. So. Okay. Uh, speaking of uh, negotiating, uh, it's about to be your opening time. I'm going to do some shopping. Don't tell me that. Don't tell me that. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, here comes the flood of people in, in five minutes. So let me shop a little bit before okay. uh, they get in here and uh, we're, we're wrestling over or anything. So, Sherry, I really appreciate the time. Thank you for having me again. I'm enjoying this thoroughly. Everybody says I'm doing a great job. I don't feel like I'm doing a great job, but I think, okay. Well, hey, let's admit something here. You yeah. told me you don't even watch the videos. I don't. I have not, I have not even watched one of these videos. I'm you mortified can, to even think about doing that. You can so. save it for posterity yeah, when you're people, 90 years old. You can look back. Even my grandkids have watched the videos i have not watched them well, so. well you're doing a phenomenal job well, and you. people appreciate your honesty and straightforward answers and uh thank you once again thank you so much for having me again t <laughs> all right Hey guys, just a quick shout out and thank you to my channel members uh, before I show you what I purchased. And speaking of that, here we go. I always find something cool here. Eight reals. Check this out. Uh, what year is this? This is an oldie, but a goodie. 1875. And uh, then, uh, hey, Sherry had a few of these. Uh, and I so I couldn't just buy just one. Uh, here is another one. This is one from, from the state of Durango, 1875. And uh, to round it out, from another state, state of Oaxaca, another eight reals. And this one is an oldie buddy goodie as well, 1873. Uh, and in case you're wondering, the prices were there. Uh, Sherry gave me the special T the Silver Stacker discount, so I paid a little bit less than that. But awesome coins, awesome video. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. And here's more.